I don't think this is the verse I wanted. Uh, let me think, which verse do I really want? Nine. All right, go to go to seventh 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 can seventh chapter verse number seven. Seven seven. <laughs> Vancha kalpata rubis cha kripa sindhu beva cha patita anam pavane vyo vaishnave vyo mahon maha jai si krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhar srivasadi gaur bhakta vindu hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 Hari Hari. <clears throat> Mata Paritaram Nanya Kinchit Asti Dananjaya Maya Savamidam Prabhtam Sruti Maniganaiva. <clears throat> Translation O conqueror of wealth, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. <clears throat> I'll read it again. He's speaking to Arjun, O Dhananjaya, O conqueror of wealth, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung in a thread. There's a common controversy over whether the supreme absolute truth is personal or impersonal. <clears throat> as far as Bhagavad Gita is concerned, the absolute truth is the personality of God at Sri Krishna, and this is confirmed in every step. In this verse in particular, it is stressed that the absolute truth is a person, that the personality of Godhead is the supreme absolute truth, is also the affirmation of the Brahma Samhita, Ishwar Parama Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha. That is, the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead is Lord Krishna, who is the primeval Lord, the reservoir of all pleasure, Govinda, the eternal form of complete bliss and knowledge. These authorities leave no doubt that the absolute truth is the supreme person, the cause of all causes. The impersonalists, however, argue on the strength of the Vedic version given in the Swetiya Swatara Upanishads, 310 Tatoya Uttara Taram Tararupam Anam Mayam Yar Etam Vidur Amriyatas Te Bhavanti Atare Dukam Eva Yap Yati. In the material world, Brahma, the primeval living entity within the universe, is understood to be the supreme amongst the demigods, human beings, and lower animals. But beyond Brahman is the transcendence who has no material form and who is free from all material contaminations. Anyone who can know him also becomes transcendental, but those who do not know him suffer the miseries of the material world. <laughs> the impersonalist puts more stress on the word arupam, but this arupam is not impersonal, it indicates the transcendental form of eternally bliss and knowledge as described in the Brahma Samhita quoted above. Other verses in the Svaita Svatara Upanishad 3, 9 and 8 substantiate this as follows. Vedaham etam purushan mahatam aditya varnam tamasam parastat tameva vidivati mrityamiti nanya pantam vidyate yayanaraha Yasma param na param asti na Yasma param na param asti kinchit Yasmam nai no jahiro sti kinchit Priksha evas the bodhi vi Tishtate ek tatas Tane dam puranam purushad sarvam 
I know the Supreme Personality of the Godhead who is transcendental to all material conceptions of darkness. Only he who knows him can transcend the bonds of birth and death. There's no way for liberation other than this knowledge of the Supreme Person. There's no true superior to that Supreme Person because he is the supermost. He is the smallest, he is smaller than the smallest, and he is greater than the greatest. He is situated as a silent tree, and he illumines the transcendental sky. And as the tree spreads its roots, he spreads his extensive energies. From this verse, is, one can conclude that the absolute truth is the supreme personality of Godhead, who is all pervading by his multi energies, both material and spiritual. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So it's important to understand because if you read and study Vedic literature, you'll you'll hear different statements regarding the absolute truth. For instance, the one that was made known here in this way, this Vatara Upanishads, that the absolute truth has no material form, but that is correct. But they translate it differently that he has no form. Um, but we can see that wherever you see something, you see it has a form. Of course, the, 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 um, the spiritualists, they say, well, when God comes to the material world, he accepts a material form in order to perform activities here. But ultimately he is impersonal. Um, but if you compare form with, with non-form, you'll see that um, form is superior than non-form. Their argument is that, well, um, form is limited, but uh, all pervading energy is unlimited. Therefore, God is unlimited. Therefore, he has no form. <clears throat> But that applies to his energies. The energies don't have any form. They work according to the direction of the personality, just like you get electricity. So you turn on your switch and electrical energy comes through the wires and you, uh, you get your electricity. So you might say, well, you're getting light, and the light is coming from a, a formless energy. And that is true. But then behind the electricity, electrical energy, there is the powerhouse. And the powerhouse is the source. But you might also say, well, the powerhouse is simply the source of all the, the energy. It's not simply a form. But then again, who is operating the powerhouse? Then you have a person. When you trace anything back to any to its origin, you find that there is some living entity that gives it its connection. Of course, the impersonalists also say that the conglomerate of all the different souls together make up the impersonal aspect of the Supreme. And because they're all souls, it's all life, but ultimately there's no form. But then again, you see that we have form and we are coming from our parents who have form and you trace it all the way back. And if you trace form all the way back, you can't come, even logically come to the idea that if something is formless as the source of all form. There's a nice discussion between Lord Chaitanya and Sri Sarabhama Bhattacharya and the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, where the Lord is, um, after hearing the formless explanation of the Vedanta Sutra from Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, the Lord pretty much was, was disturbed by hearing that. And then he gave his understanding. Because you can see that anywhere in the world, form is superior to uh, something that is formless 
what is a formless object? There's no object that is formless. It's only energy. And energy, and, and when you speak about uh, activity, you have to you have to apply the, the principle of person. So person has to be there. So the person is the source of the energy and not like the energy is the source of the person. If you have energy, that doesn't mean you can create a person from energy, but the energy is simply the external manifestation of the person's activities. So Krishna does everything through his energy and those energies are considered to be without form. They're just energies. But in the absolute sense also, they also have form. So everything comes down to the idea of form. And so just like we talk about love of God, can you love something that has no form? What do you love? And so the, the empire personalists say, in order to create worship, you have to have form. So God accepts different forms, but that's these forms are just for the sake of worship. They're not his forms. But it says, Nityo Nityanam, Chaitan is Chaitananam, Eko Bahudav Vidadanti Kama. Or actually, uh, uh, Gyani Sakalen, what is it? Advaitam Achutam Anadi Ananta Rupam. Ananta Rupam. He has unlimited forms. Adhyam. And his forms are Purana, they're old, they are ancient, they are the original forms. So he's the supreme original personality of Godhead. Otherwise, how can you speak of love? How can you speak of qualities without person? There's no such thing as qualities that are without the person. And we talk about love of God. Love of God means person to person. We are a person and we interact with also persons. So this is very um, essential to know because most persons who practice spiritual life, either in the Western world or in the Eastern realm are impersonalists. Why? Because if there's a person, you have to follow their instructions. If he's a person and he's giving orders, then that is the principle of connection with that person. Just like your relationship with your parents is based on your obedience to your parents. Although you may have parents, if you don't obey, be to, uh, obey them, the relation is, tar is tarnished or it is somewhat less so the first people who their people are, are generally envious of the lord and so rather than not follow the instructions of a person they relegate the person to being impersonal and then you don't have to follow anything all you do is do meditation you do prayers you chant mantras you do various types of rituals um, but Krishna, of course, Krishna gives that sanction in the uh, Bhagavad Gita. It says, Tesham Diktataras Tesham Avyak Avyakta Chaitasam. That it's, uh, yeah, you can worship the impersonal, but he says it's very difficult and it takes a long time to realize it too, to become Brahman realized. But if one can become realized of the absolute truth personality of Godhead, then because it's the highest manifestation or the complete, that's a better word, a complete manifestation of the absolute truth, it includes whatever else. So the impersonal Brahman, along with the localized Paramatma, which is the Lord within the heart, is automatic, automatically included within the personality of Godhead. So God realization. But in the Western world, people don't follow the Lord. And that's a sign of impersonal. And in the, in the Eastern realm, they just don't uh, accept that the, the personality of Godhead is the 
is the sunam bom or the ultimate principle of the absolute truth. But from a logical point of view, it makes complete sense. We want to speak about accepting the shastras. Sometimes they say God is near guna. Guna means qualities and near is without. But then again, you have to hear. Uh, if we don't hear from those who know or those who are in a position to give knowledge, and then we will accept whatever we think it is, or we might be hearing from the wrong people. But therefore, the great souls also say that it is the we have to surrender to the supreme personality of Godhead, who is the source of the impersonal also. And he has a form, he has activities, he has pastimes, he has qualities, he has many names. All these are all part of the absolute truth. So we learn about the Lord as a person. And that way we, have, we can develop a relationship with the Lord. So the Mayavadis and the impersonalists are envious of the Lord. And because of their envy, they don't want to acknowledge the personality because then they have to follow that personality. And if they don't want to do that, they, they want to perform whatever activities they want to perform and call it spiritual activities. But it's another form of cheating. That's why Lord Brahma says, Aruna, Krishchena, Padampada, Padantiyada, Yusmat Anugra, Anugrahaya, that Tasmad Tasmad Yudman Anugrahaya. What is that verse? Aruna Krishchena, Padam Padam Padantiyada, Yusmat Anugrahaya, that they fall down. Although they climb very high, they perform many penances and austerities, and uh, and they can also somehow or other extract themselves and be infected by the material energy. But because they have no regard for the lotus feet of the Lord, they fall down again into the material world and take up material activities. So the whole the absolute truth is a person. He is known as Krishna, the Ishwar. He's the source of all other manifestations of the Godhead. He is the Adi Purush, Govindam Adi Purush Tamaham Bajami. He is Govindam and he is the original personality of Godhead. One who knows that will make fast spiritual advancement. Okay, so we want to learn more about Krishna because if we don't know Krishna, it is very difficult to develop love for Krishna. Krishna is all attractive, but knowledge of Krishna makes that attractiveness increase within our minds and hearts. So devotees should take time to learn what is the nature of God. How does he, why does he do what he does? How does he do what he does? Where, where, what, what he likes, what he doesn't like. He's a person. So it's very important that we develop this knowledge of the Lord. And that way, knowledge is the basis for developing love for Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll stop there. There's a little uh, relationship that the supreme absolute truth is the personality of Godhead, which is the source of all other forms of the Lord. And at the same time, the, all of the forms, even in the material world.
Thank you. Okay, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj, for this class. Thank you so much. Uh, I request devotees, if there are any questions, comments, realizations, please go ahead. Thank you, Krishna Maharaj. This is Mahabha Vesti Sokol Sushila Prabhupada and goes to you, our old Vaishnavas. Uh, you said that you should, uh, we should learn about Krishna. Uh, and I was just thinking, like, I know that Shiva Bhagavatam it's just explained a lot about Krishna, what he likes, he doesn't like. And I guess also Krishna book. Uh, is there any other books that you kind of see that has... Uh, like is all the books are speaking about Krishna in a sense, or there are some books that are more, you know. Oh, some are more, more and some are less. Bhagavatam is the best. And uh, I mean, Krishna is speaking the Bhagavad Gita. He says, uh, I mean, Arjuna confirms his position as the Supreme Personality. The Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavam. Purushod, Shashvatam, Divyam. Uh, so there is many verses spoken both about Krishna and by Krishna, illustrating, enunciating his position as the supreme personality of Godhead. That's in the Gita. The Bhagavatam is full. And Thank you, Brahma Samhita also. Thank you very much. Uh, Raj Prabhu, we have raised hand. Please go ahead, Prabhuji. Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I just want to say all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, I, I wanted to come back to you at the beginning of your talk. You uh, mentioned energy and form, and I wanted to understand that a bit better. In I understand that we, like, in a sense, that we are not the doer because. The, the action is obviously sanctioned by the Lord and act, uh, organized by material nature. But obviously, in a sense, we are the doer because we desire we desire good things and bad things sometimes. So we have a form. Uh, does our form, do we have a spiritual energy? Do we have an energy? Spirit is energy. Spirit is superior energy. Material energy is inferior energy. Everything is energy. Everything works on a combination of energies. There are material energies, there are spiritual energies. There are 16, 16 prominent spiritual energies. Well, Krishna has three main energies. Within the spiritual, there are 16. Within the material energy, there is there are generally three. Goodness, passion, and ignorance. Yeah, everything's energy. We connect with a source, and that source has a particular type of energy everything is energy when you think you can all you also project a certain type of energy in a certain direction depending depending on the quality of your thought everything is energy but there's a source and that's krishna he's a source of all the energies
if you want to know how to use energy, then you have to read and study the Bhagavatam to see how to apply the energy in a certain way to get a certain type of result. A lot of that's talked about in the third canal in the 26th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. You'll find a lot of information about energy there. The third canto is full of it. And there, is a, there is even one whole chapter that talks about creation based on the atom. <coughs> a combination of different atoms make up a different type of uh, a <laughs> different type of molecule and the molecules increase and then the uh, Bhagavatam is very, very scientific, extremely <laughs> third canto. But then in the later chapters, chapter 26, especially chapter 26 is, uh, speaks a lot about energy, spiritual energy. Everything is energy. Energy has qualities also. So there's different energies. Okay. So we're tapping into different energies all the time. Yeah. And you're in a, you also you also putting out an energy too all the time. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. If you think of Krishna, you put out spiritual energy. <laughs> Always remember <laughs> Krishna and never forget him. And then you're in then you're in the superior energy all the time. <laughs> One day, I hope. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my uh, question is, uh, Maya Badi, uh, even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mentioned, if we even listen to them, our spiritual life will be finished. So, in like one of the ten offenses, we should not instruct any um, person who is faithless or atheist. Similarly, should not be try to discuss with any Mayabadi because there are so many pastimes where Lord and Prabhupada, of course, they are different, but they had a lot of good argument to defeat Mayabadi. But they're explaining things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord Chaitanya, he, he discussed with Sarvabhama Bhattacharya and converted him. And then who else was there? Till Lord Chaitanya con converted Prakasananda Saraswati. And uh, Prabhupada changed all of us who were closet Maya Vailis. <laughs> we didn't have a philosophical basis for our Maya body attitude, but we were Maya bodies. So it's okay, Guru Maharaj, to talk and discuss with Maya body people, as far as you're explaining the right concepts.
Krishna Guru Maharaj. Oh, hello. <laughs> okay, so. Everything is a person. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. This is a very important subject matter. Prabhupada said to, uh, to defeat the impersonalists is one of our most important activities. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So I think we should continue focusing on Discussing Krishna consciousness even with Maya Badish. Yeah, they don't, they're not, it's not a discussion, it's just an argument. It's Guru Maharaj. No, they're stubborn, they don't change. But there's things you can, you can defeat them, but they won't accept defeat. It's just, that's just the way it is. But if you're talking to someone, if you're talking to some Maya body and he has a group of people who are following him, then you could expose him for what he is and, make it, and uh, show his followers or anybody who's in present for the discussion that he is off. But that takes some, some real knowledge. It's not easy to, to, because they're very expert at argument. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, shall we yes. end? You can end? stop here, yeah. Okay. Sure, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your time and association today, Maharaj. Very grateful. To tomorrow's class is at 8 a.m. Um, 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, Guru Maharaj. Eastern time. So that's 7 o'clock. Chicago time, yeah. Oh, 7 o'clock Chicago time? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. So that'll be a little earlier tomorrow. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. And that's with the Harrisburg group. <laughs> okay. So that's, so yeah, 7 o'clock tomorrow for me. Yes,
Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. I'm just uh, I had two hours sleep last night, so <laughs> we're still still going on. Uh, we're still flying in the air yet. <laughs> Uh, Maharaj, actually, Anjali Mataji is asking about your itinerary in the US. If she can, if possible, she can come and see you. Uh, she can come for the uh, Radhastami Initiation Festival in Chicago on the 13th. Yeah. We invite everyone to come. Or if they want to come, come a, a day ahead of time on the Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So it's, uh, it's Monday morning, which is Red Ostomy. The uh, there is an initiations, <clears throat> and um, Sunday I'll be here also. So. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. We invite everybody to come. The more people that come from the initiations, the better. It gives it gives more support to the to the candidates. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Aribo. Uh,